This is Scriptural Pursuit with your host, Glenn Russell. When Hudson Taylor was director of the China Inland Mission, he often interviewed candidates from the mission field. On one occasion, according to the reports, he met a group of young applicants to determine their motivation for service. He asked them, and why do you wish to go as a foreign missionary? And one of them said, I want to go because Christ has commanded us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Another one said, I want to go because millions are perishing without Christ. Others gave different answers, but good responses. Then Hudson Taylor said, all of those motives, however good, will fail you in times of testing, trials, tribulations, and possible death. There is but one motive that will sustain you in trial and testing, and that is the love of Christ. Welcome to Scripture Pursuit. I'm Glenn Russell, your host. Today we're exploring more about missions, and we're exploring in particular motivations and preparation for mission. We're so glad to have someone with us who is well-equipped to deal with this topic, and that's Dr. Cheryl Doss. Cheryl, welcome. We're so glad to have you with us. You've served as a missionary a parent, a mother, a wife in mission context, as well as a professor, and for many years have served as the trainer of missionaries. Welcome to Scripture Pursuit. Thank you. Glad to be here. And uh, as we continue, we just want to remind those who are watching and listening that you can find Scripture Pursuit on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and search for Scripture Pursuit, and you'll see any of our programs from the past as well as this one. Before we go further, let's Pray that God will open our hearts and minds to his will. Dear Lord, we seek you today that you may come into our hearts and fill us with your love for those who have not come to know you yet. May we have the heart of God. You are a missionary God, and may we be moved to respond according to your heart. May it fill our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. So, Cheryl, as we think about missions and motivation, I just want to step back and ask a basic question to you. What is mission? Yeah, that is very basic. Of course, there's many kinds of mission, aren't there? Mm. Um, Mm -hmm. And and we talk about mission to the moon or or a military mission. And a mission usually means a group of people engaged in a singular occupation or a singular purpose or a singular outcome. And uh, when it comes to Christian mission or Adventist mission, we're talking about people who are gathered together as a group with a singular um, purpose and outcome desired, and that is to bring people to Christ and to, to share our love of him with others. And I realize my next question could be a whole program in itself, but you might have a a short response to it. And that is, uh, why should we even do missions? I mean, why not just leave people in their context, in their cultures, and God will understand who they are and and what's the point of it? Yes, we always, uh, when we train missionaries, that's one of the first questions we ask. We actually have Mm -hmm. a little skit in which we raise that issue of why go to be a missionary? Uh, uh, often what's interesting, Glenn, is that people accept the word mission much easily, easier than they accept the word missionary. In mm-hmm. fact, mission often has a very positive uh, th- hmm. uh, context in people's minds, but missionary can be often negative. Mm-hmm. And we have to address that straight off when we're talking to people sure. who are who are, are thinking about uh, and work, uh, studying to go to be missionaries. Um, And so the first thing we have them do is to pull out their Bible and start looking Mm. at it. Ask the question, what are, where do you find in the Bible stories of people who are asked to go into mission? So let's try that, Uh, Cheryl. Let's open our our Bibles. Where would you take us first? Well, many people, and we ask, we we draw these um, these stories from the group it, themselves. They go looking for it, and I would I would uh, challenge everybody that's listening mm. to take your Bible and just go and look and see where you find stories of God calling people into mission. And one of the first ones we often mention is is in uh, Genesis twelve, where Abraham is mm-hmm. being called to go and and uh, to a land that he doesn't know so that he can be a blessing to the nations. 
And maybe question. if it would be all right, let me just read some of that passage to refresh sure. our hearts and minds. Uh, Genesis chapter 12, starting with verse 1. Now the Lord had said to Abram, go out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land I will show you, and I will make you a great nation. I will bless you, and I'll make your name great. And you shall be a blessing, and I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now, when it says that he's going to be uh, a great nation, that implies this was not just for Abraham, doesn't it? Yeah, this was for the world, and all the nations of the world would be blessed through him. And so that, that's a, a beginning story. But the, you can take almost any of the heroes of the Bible uh, and they were asked to go out of their comfort zone, <laughs> whatever that yeah. was, cross national boundaries, uh, ethnic boundaries, cultural boundaries, uh, to to serve God among the nations. So whether that's uh, Elijah, Elisha, or David, or uh, the little maid, <laughs> for example, who 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 was a, a slave, some uh, Daniel, Joseph. All of these uh, mm. these stories in the Bible show us people who are willing to leave uh, and serve God or or were forced sometimes in the mm. case of Daniel, for example, but yet served God very effectively in the places where he took them. And it seems most of the time they didn't go as individuals. There were there was a family that was involved. Well, th this is the point I, I always like to make about Abraham. One of the interesting things there is we often call it the call of Abraham. But mm. in reality, it was the call of Abraham and Sarah. Mm. Because uh, Abraham tried to fulfill that call <laughs> <laughs> with other people. It didn't work. God had actually called mm. Sarah. And so when God calls a person into mission, he is calling the entire family. Okay. And, uh, if, and that's one important thing as people make decisions about whether to serve God uh, in wherever they are, what kind of work they do, what kind of uh, where they live, so on. God acts, wants us to go as a family, to engage the entire family in his mission. Which now, of course, if we've heard the call, so that's the starting place. What about motivation? I mean, I'm reminded that when we talk about missionaries, we should always remember God's the first missionary, isn't he? He he comes to Adam and Eve in their shame and their guilt uh, after they have sinned, and he comes to them. He seeks them out. So God's a missionary God. What's the motivation for anyone being missionary, whether it's crossing international borders or whether it's crossing the street uh, to reach someone? Uh, what's our motivation? Well, I would say that, first of all, uh, your story at the beginning really made the point. It's love, first of all, love for God, a love for his, for the people he is calling, love for others. Um, and it requires an experience with Christ. What's interesting to me, uh, always, uh, how many stories there are of in Jesus' life. Uh, just for example, the demoniacs, uh, the garrisons mm. there. They wanted to go with Jesus. They wanted to be with him more. And what did he say to them? No, you go back to your people and tell tell them what, what I have done mm. for you. What, what is the transformation in your life that has happened? And that is really the, the message, the, the, the motivation is what has Jesus done for me? Uh, what can I share with other people? And then we, when we have that and we are, we're filled with his love, then it is, it's a natural thing to talk about what he's done for us. I'm reminded in Luke 24 of the experience of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. And yeah. once it was revealed to them that Jesus was risen and that he was indeed the Messiah, they just had to run all the way back to Jerusalem to tell somebody. There's something about the conversion experience that we just have to share it because we realize how our lives have been changed and and we find meaning and purpose and joy and that's the motivation so the love of god uh connected with the the uh love for other fellow human beings and there's also the aspect of the glory of god isn't there for his glory yes uh, it's interesting to me uh, uh one of one of our colleagues down at southern brahm overholzer wrote a dissertation in which he researched um, the motivation for uh, international workers uh, in, in the humanitarian fields. 
And he found there, you know, humans, we're all mixed people. We all have mixed motivations. But he found there were four basic ways, reasons that people want to serve others. Um, And and this is mostly for in in international work. And um, there, first of all, there is the caring, caring internationalist, a person who's concerned about the the troubles of the world, Mm. the people who see and want to help. Uh, there, there's the the people who have always felt uh, that God or was calling them to be missionaries. There's some people that just grow up with that sense that mm-hmm. that is their, their future. So there's the obedient soldier, the person who um, is asked by an organization or the church to go into mission and they see that is God's call through this organization. And then there's the others who are the, the, they're immersed in the movement. And I think that would be for all of us as Adventists would be, we're a part of a movement that is, is drawn, calling people to be prepared for Jesus mm-hmm. coming. And so that all those motivations are a part of some more, more uh, inner directed, some more outer directed. Those are all can be part of God's call to mission in our lives. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, and we should we should humbly recognize that we're not the only ones that God is using. I was walking along the beach up in Holland, Michigan here a couple of weeks ago and happened to have on a shirt that referred to missions and a gentleman stopped me, started asking questions and and he was also involved in mission things and and actually we walked to his car and he shared a book that he's written and and I was just reminded, you know, he was not in my faith community, but he's part of God's movement of of missions. And so we work uh, in recognition that it's a lot bigger than we are. It, it is. And if you, you get the World Christian Encyclopedia and t- start looking at mm. all the people that are serving God around the world, uh, which kind of brings us to another point the lesson made, which is about um, how even people that we don't think deserve somehow the love of God, God calls us to be missionaries too. Mm. Mm. And um, in one of the, one of the, uh, reports that I, I read in that encyclopedia is that when it comes to um, those peoples that we think are resistant, okay, so this may be areas of the world that have other world religions, uh, when the people are resistant to, to Christianity, the fact is that there are actually more decisions for Christ per witness, hmm. per person to witness, than there are in the parts of the world that are Christian or open to Christianity. Isn't and that interesting? Maybe the resistance has more to do with our willingness to serve, mm. our willingness to go and, and share what God has done for us, uh, than it has to do with actually people being resistant. Can we go back to that idea of, of the call and obedience? Because, you know, sometimes people say, well, Christ, uh, for for a Christian, missions is an option, but I don't find that. If we go to Luke chapter 24, for example, you know, he's very, very clear. You shall be witnesses, you know. Uh, so the call to go and share a witness is someone who shares their experience, what they've seen and experienced in their lives. And, and that has come all the way down from the disciples to us today. It's not really an option, is it? No, and by the time people go through the Bible, you see all through the Old Testament, what was Israel's failing? Oh, yes, they 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 uh, lived, uh, sometimes they didn't live up to the principles they were told, but one of their big failings was they failed to draw the nations yeah. to God. Yeah. And so all through the Psalms, you see that through the, through the prophets. When Jesus was talking to the men on the road to Emmaus, <laughs> he he was pointing to the law, the prophets, you know, mm. Psalms. He was talking about all those ways in which people had not fulfilled his mission, but he came as the the fulfillment of God's mission on earth and our work and for him, our pointing to him is now our responsibility now to draw Girl, people. Uh, as we think about missions, uh, we could spend 
I, I feel kind of perplexed here because I'd love to spend more time talking about missions, but we also have to talk about preparation for missions. And so let's shift a little bit. I think if we remember, our motivation must be from the heart of God, stirring our hearts. And it needs to be something that is not just emotional, but also there's intellectual uh, motivation, but there's also training. So could right. we talk a little bit about preparation and training? This is your specialty. You've dedicated your life to this. Uh, what should we know about training, whether it's crossing the street or crossing uh, borders internationally? There are some things that are same, some things that are different. Yeah. And actually, I think the foundations of them are the same no matter hmm. where who and who it is and where they are when it comes to preparing for mission. Uh, we had five objectives when we were training missionaries. And we're talking about cross-cultural missionaries, but I think these are the same five objectives we need as for every one of us, mm. no matter where we leave, uh, live and serve. The first one is that we need to be people who are growing spiritually. That foundation mm. of, of relationship with Christ is, is there, as we've been talking about. Secondly, we need to be people who are thinking biblically. And that's the word of God, understanding God's word, doing what we do because of what we know God has asked us to do in his through his word. The third, is, we call it reasoning missiologically, but that's that's a big term. It really means thinking about and using the tools of missiology. Those tools are those that look at who are the people we're going to, what are their, what, where are they at how can we meet them where they're at? Uh, understanding their context, um, understanding the kinds of things that are going to be a blessing and, and, and ways of making relation, building relationships with them. So using those tools that we have learned from, uh, from social science, from anthropology, mm. from other, using the tools that we know. You know, too often, Glenn, we are so busy thinking about what we have to say we forget what people need to hear mm. and where they are. Yes. And where they, where they're coming from and how mm -hmm. can we actually connect with them? So reasoning using those tools. And then uh, the fourth area is living holistically. We have mm. to embody what we are trying to teach and we have to do it in a, in a healthy and holistic so physical health, spiritual health, mental health, emotional health, relational health, um, can how can we grow in those areas? And so that preparation is important. And then lastly, we have a kind of a big area called serving incarnationally. You know, we need mm. to serve as Jesus served. He didn't go um, as as the ruler. He didn't come into the in into the priest into a priest's home. He was a, just a uh, you know. General Joe, so to speak. He just he was just a guy next door. Um, and and um he served. There's no place in the Bible where you, where you have servant leadership, actually. You only see the word servant. He came hmm. as a servant. Philippians mm -hmm. 2, you know, so careful tells us he came as with the mind of a servant. And we have to go with that same mind, which means that we never give up, right? Hmm. Servants don't have the option of quitting. We 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 uh, we seek to serve others humbly, without uh, we're we're not the person to to force them to do anything. We come as humble servants to them. We can we continue to serve even when things are difficult, when there when there are uh, roadblocks in our way, when we've made mistakes. We still keep going. We have to. We're servants. And so that that serving, uh, we, we serve through conflict, uh, interpersonal or other kind of, we continue serving no matter what. We don't have the option of quit, quitting if we're going to serve as Jesus served. You mentioned Philippians chapter 2. Let's just refresh our minds on that. I'm reading from Philippians chapter 2, starting with verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. And then there's this description of him stepping down into this world in his incarnation, uh, in, in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, 
but made of himself of no reputation, emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. So there's our model of incarnation, isn't it? It is. And we have we have many of those through our through history, through our history. You think through the COVID era, we had missionaries serving in parts of the world where they couldn't get good care and they died of COVID. Yes. We yes. have people who are willing to serve unto death today. And I hope hmm. each one of us will adopt that attitude. So we've talked about a call and we've talked about motivation of love and, and the glory of God. We've talked about these five objectives. Again, people who grow spiritually, think biblically, reason missiologically, and live holistically as they serve incarnationally. Could we talk a little bit about the importance of the Holy Spirit in our preparation? Of course, that that's basic in everything, starting right with our motivation. Hmm. Um, I think it is the the Holy Spirit that pricks our hearts in ways that that helps us move beyond where we're comfortable, and whether that is to to talking to our neighbor or or just uh, studying the Bible more. The Holy Spirit is the that active force in our and and person that comes into our lives and and makes alive in us personally motivation. But then also, it's only the Holy Spirit that can truly prepare us. I don't know what you need <laughs> to be mm. a, a better prepared missionary. I don't. You don't know what I need, and so we right. have to allow the Holy Spirit to to bring into our lives those experiences, life experiences, understandings, growth areas that um, are important for me to be the kind of missionary God wants me to be. And I think we see this in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, when Jesus is speaking to the disciples in his last conversation that's recorded in Scripture. He says, but you shall receive power after which the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and, and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. But first he says, you know, you need to wait for the Holy Spirit. And that must have been an interesting thing. Go, but but wait first. So there's something that needs to happen in our preparation. Yeah, and I and we see a lot of people who are so anxious to get, get to the work hmm. that they forget the importance of waiting. Uh, we we've had that experience even uh, with people who are being sent out as missionaries. They're you know they're supposed to go through a training process. Oh, but uh, they're so anxious to get there to do the job they don't have time to go uh, and hmm. attend a mission institute or attend a training program which is only three weeks long. You know, so sometimes our will is such is so driven when actually we do need to wait. But then then we also find people that are waiting so long they don't do anything. Yes, yes. And so there is a balance there. I think we need, well if we're really, if we're really um, listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, he will act, tell us when to wait and when to move. And, you know, we only have about five more minutes here, but I think part of that waiting had to do with the disciples reconciling to each other, uh, confessing, uh, and and preparing their hearts, confessing their own sins, making things right. You know, missionaries who can't get along with each other are not going to be very effective witness. Yes, and 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 one of the things we always have to prepare people for is that we serve with humans. <laughs> mm. Humans are the same around the world, right? We there will be conflicts, there will be misunderstandings, there will be times where we don't get along necessarily so well so we need the tools that uh, that to to resolve those issues mm. those tools come to us from god's word those tools come from us from our self-understanding from our willingness to be open mind open-hearted mm. um and open to other people our willingness to allow god to act and not feeling that we have to always be the one to act um so there are many tools that we can learn uh, that will help us when we hit those rough spots, mm. which always come. I don't care where you live or where you're serving. They always do come. And, and by the way, those those challenges come if we don't go. So we might as well go <laughs> serve because we're going to have right. people challenges in life no matter what. That's right. And, and the lessons that we learn from serving help us in all areas of life. Oh, you said so much right there. That is so true. 
you know, I was just talking to a college student uh, last Sabbath who is a missionary kid. His parents are missionaries. He's grown up overseas, lived in their several different countries. And he's told me, you know, one of the best things he's done recently is he went on a mission trip. Hmm. Hmm. He said it's so much, so different when you're actually going and doing it yourself. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's that just reflects it, whether you're young or old. It's so mm. important to go mm -hmm. and do it. Too often we have uh, we are we have the great ability to criticize something we haven't tried ourselves. Mm. That's <laughs> you've said a lot there, Cheryl Dawson. Our last couple of minutes. What else would you want to say about motivation and preparation for missions? First of all, I would say that each day, as we as we prepare our hearts and spend time in God's word and in, in listening to the Holy Spirit, we are preparing for mission. It should, that, that's the only reason to even do those activities is because God has asked each one of us to, to prepare for his mission, to be a part of his mission. He's at work around the world. And our goal would be to join him where he is at work, to be part of his mission. And then to prepare ourselves, um, which requires... No, understanding ourselves, understanding our weaknesses, being open to growth and change, being willing to serve and make mistakes and mm -hmm. keep serving, to always keep trying, never to give up, because we are part of God's mission. And in, in him, we can do all things. So there's a humility that comes. And it's not just a matter of getting to heaven ourselves, which seems to be the focus of much of our contemporary Christianity. But there's a world that's that's in great need of a loving picture of Christ. Yeah, and I'm sure you in a, your other lessons you're going to talk much more about the needs of the world, but obviously that's never uh, lost in our motivation for mission. Mm -hmm. We serve because He loves us, and we want we want to serve Him because we love Him. We want to tell what He's done for us, but we're doing that because God loves each person in this world just as Amen. He loves. Amen. Well, thank you so much to our guest, Dr. Cheryl Doss, mission trainer and missionary herself and university professor. Next time on Scripture Pursuit, we'll continue this series focusing on God's mission. So join us again next time. But until then, today and every day, let's continue to pursue the God of the Scriptures. This is Scriptural Pursuit with your host, Glenn Russell. 